Hmm. Not exactly welcoming. I'd better find a way to the refuge. Hmm. Thanks, but no thanks. Oh, how nice. Pretty sure that's a bad idea. Tempting, though. It's so beautiful, so calm. But what am I doing here? Well, they say bad things come in threes. First mother's death, then poor Katusha, and now Oscar. I can't believe I've lost him again. Am I doomed or what? Thank goodness I've still got the girl in the painting. Something to hang my hopes on. But maybe I'm just kidding myself. And why me? Why not Katusha? Why did she have to die? It's like... Like this painting has chosen me. Oh, it's a beautiful place. Don't know what I expect to find here, though. Yet somehow it feels right. Can't say why. I mean, why am I so sure this mountain refuge has anything to do with the painting? Maybe I'm just a hopeless optimist, or a lost dreamer. <sighs> I guess there's only one way to find out. Herr Müller was right. It's quite a walk to the refuge. Well, I guess the sooner I head out, the sooner I get there.
wow, what a fantastic view. I should try and find a better spot to admire it from. Better be careful here. Too many fallen trees and wobbly rocks for my liking. Looks like all sorts of wild animals live in these ma- Hiking tips? Thanks, but I think I'm starting to get the hang of it. Well, that was one heck of a walk. Oh, come on. A ladder now? Uh, okay, let's just do this. Pretty sure there must be another way. Oh. That must provide energy to the refuge. seen that before.
That must be it. Now I should try to find a matching point somewhere. No matching points here. I should try something else. No, it doesn't match. No matching points here. I should try something else. That rock wall. It can't be a coincidence. Looks similar, sure. But it could just be a coincidence. I need to find more accurate clues. Those sharp peaks, they look exactly the same. not specific enough to draw any solid conclusions. Just what I was looking for. Perfect. Wow. Hardly changed at all. Breathtaking, isn't it, Fraulein? Beautiful. It is called the Silberspiegel. Our local pride. Judging from my painting, it wasn't that different 60 years ago. Ma'am, is everything all right? Yes. It's just that... You look very much like the person in the picture, Fraulein. So, you do know her then, don't you? Can't say I don't, but it was a very long time ago. Actually, I've come a very long way to find out about her. I would really like to know who she is, or was. It's very important to me, you see? And why is that, Fraulein? You said so yourself. We look very much alike, right? I see. By the way, what is your name? Oh. Walker. Kate Walker. I am Lenny. Lenny Renner. Nice to meet you, Frau Lenny. Demoiselle, my dear. My legs never did manage to get me to church in time. Oh. Demoiselle Lenny. Well, Fräulein Walker, 1937, you say? Ah, that was before the war, when I could still run like the fawn wind. Father was the manager in those days. It was one summer evening that the whole story of your painting began. I remember it like it was yesterday. A group of scientists were staying at the refuge to prepare for an expedition to some faraway place in the east. They were being trained by a local alpinist who was to guide them. His name was Leon Kabatis. Oh, handsome as a Greek 
god he was. And an Olympic champion, no less. Very popular with the ladies. And he was lovely to me. Would give me a wink and a smile whenever I served him his beer. Thank you, Demoiselle Lenny, he would say. In French, if you please. Made me feel like a proper little madam. But then Frau Junta would always shoo me away. Frau Junta? Must have been in her mid-twenties. But of course, to me, she was an old hag. Past it. And I didn't like the way she bossed my Leon around with that camera of hers. The refuge was buzzing. Everyone was jolly. And the scientists were there. Debating as usual about this and that. A cheerful bunch, really, despite their disputes. Except, that is, for one. Frank Hoss was his name. Preferred his own company. Though I could see, even with my young eyes, he was devious as the devil. But what about the girl in the picture? Well, she was there that evening, too. She had come to work through the summer. Her name was Dana. Dana Rose. Ah, oh, she was as cute as a button and well-mannered with it. Even father was sweet as a lamb to her. Take care of the scientist drinks, then go around taking orders, and have a look at the stove while you're at it. Yes, Herr Gustav. Will you be all right now, Dana? It's the first busy night since you started, so just ask if there's anything you need to know. All right, my lovely? Thank you, Herr Gustav, but it looks pretty straightforward. I'll be fine. That's the girl. Off you trot then, my lovely. Keep smiling, and you'll have them carrying your tray for you. I need to serve those drinks to the scientists. The keg's empty. I need to change it. Here's the neighbor. Beer now, huh? So this is the Spitzer. It's not the right kind of beer. It's not the right kind of beer. Beer now, huh? The keg's empty. I need to change it.
Birne, huh? That should be it. Let's serve these gentlemen now. That's it. Hold it. Better not interrupt them. That Frau Junta wasn't exactly friendly earlier with Lenny. Lenny, sweetheart? Crikey! You nearly made me jump out of my skin! What have you got there? Oh, it's... it's a camera lens, that's all. A camera lens? Yeah. Borrowed it from Frau Junta? <laughs> I've just made her acquaintance. A real charmer, isn't she? And she never lets me have a go of her gear anyway. I only wanted to help her film something. I bet she's jealous. Lenny, what's so special about Frau Junta's equipment that makes you want to steal it? Borrow it. All right, borrow it. Can't you see? Who would be interested in Ginger Junta if she didn't have a camera, huh? Too old for Leon. She uses it so she can be the center of attention, you know. Is that what you want? No, not exactly. Besides, there's nothing to do here. I do understand, Lenny, but... No, you don't. Feels like a prison here sometimes, all on my own. When I grow up, I'll live at the top of a building in the big city, and I'll have a swimming pool on my roof. Believe me, I do understand, Lenny. Because of my coughing fits, I've sometimes had to stay in my room for weeks on end. Imagine that, nothing to see but the same four walls. Oh, right. Must have been pretty tough, I guess. That's why I took up the piano. Do you like doing anything special, Lenny? I suppose I like making stuff with Papa. He's got ever such clever hands, you know. But he's always so busy in the summer. Let's be friends then, shall we? You won't tell on me then? Not now that we're friends. You promise? I promise. Leon, dear, do make an effort.
No, we'll have to go higher, I'm telling you. But my point is that it's highly improbable that any primate will be able to survive so high up, let alone thrive. And if they were thriving, we wouldn't be looking for them, would we? I say they've taken to the higher ground, and they only come down to steal livestock and game. Look out, chaps. Gentlemen, your drinks? Ah, good on you, lassie. Horst, make yourself useful and pass these around. First day, is it? Better make a wish, then. All right, I will. I wish you would tell me what all those maps are for. Ah, that I can grant you. They show all the different locations of an expedition we're planning. And what about you, gentlemen? Well, let me introduce you to my dream team. Horst Sauer, talented anthropologist and frequent but worthy pain in the ass, your mother. Rudolf Jaeger, distinguished ethnologist. And last but not least, Albert Bauer, paleontologist. And yourself? Reinhard Berger, biologist. As Herr Berger says, we're here to train for the Origin Expedition. In return for funding for our own project back home. And for the love of science, eh, Horst? Oh, yes, of course, Herr Berger. I'm sure none of us would be here otherwise, would we? And what about you, my lovely? Oh, I'm Dana. I'm working here during the holidays, that's all. I see you haven't come just for the view, then. <laughs> oh no, Fraulein. We're only here for the beer and a pretty smile. That's our trainer out there. Supposed to knock this scraggly lot into shape for the big climb in Baltayar. <clears throat> right. And what's that one of, if you don't mind me asking? That is Baltayar, a remote region in the mountains of northern China. That's where I'll be leading my team in a couple of weeks. And what's this expedition for? Well, keep it to yourself, but the code name is Origin. And if I have my way, it will likely change the way we perceive humanity. I'm curious to know what this Origin expedition is all about, though. If it's not top secret, that is. Put it this way, Fraulein Dana. If, uh, when, we discover what we're looking for, you will no doubt remember this conversation as your claim to fame. You will tell your grandchildren that you served the Origin team. The team that discovered none other than the missing link of the superior race of humans, the Australopithecus habilis, the direct ancestor of Homo sapiens. Or, more vulgarly put, the abominable snowman. Oh, I see. Now I get why it's called Origin. Whatever we find, whatever we call it, it's likely to send shockwaves all through the world of anthropology. It will help us to explain how we evolved from Australopithecus to modern man, and then became... <laughs> he's off again. Get him started on anthropology and he's like a bolted horse. I don't think Fraulein Dana wants you to clobber her with your explanations, Horst. <laughs> I'm sure it's all very interesting, but I must admit I'm more into the arts myself. Music, mostly. Come, gentlemen, here's to the Brown Shadow for generously sponsoring this expedition, which is sure to redefine our understanding of mankind. Oh, I see we're fraternizing with the personnel, gentlemen. Just giving a toast to our generous sponsor, Herr Hertz. May I remind you that this mission, financed by my party, is confidential? Do you know what that means, Dr. Berger? Yes, Herr Hertz. It means, gentlemen, 
It is strictly forbidden to communicate any details or objectives to anyone outside our circle, let alone to the first waitress to come by twinkling her eyelashes. Fraulein, as soon as you're done here, I suggest you get back to your chores. What a brute. That is one of the inconveniences of working with a heavily politicized private sponsor. But he's just doing his job. And I suppose, like anything else in life, there has to be some compromise to get what one desires. So, think nothing of it, Fraulein. It is the way of science. Indeed, it is the way of the world. The way of the world, Herr Berger? I'm sorry, but in case you do not know, let me tell you what members of the Brown Shadow do to Vagarins like me. They... They smash windows. They assault innocent people for no reason at all. They are fascists and criminals, Herr Berger. With all due respect, don't you feel ashamed to be associated with such... such tyrants? I would be careful when expressing such extreme accusations, Fraulein. There are always overzealous members of any party, always have been. And even so, we are not politicians. We do not claim to save humanity. Our job is to explain how it came about. Why, if the scientific community had to hold progress at every political crossroads, then humanity would never have advanced any further than Homo erectus. Dana! Dana, chop chop. This isn't a French parlor, my girl. Yes, Herr Gustav. I... I'd better go. Thank you, gentlemen. What a strange mechanism. It reminds me of the automatons on the musical square. Off you go, my girl. You'll be fine. And there's no need to be nervous. I'm here if there's the slightest problem. And there won't be. <laughs> I'm glad Herr Gustav likes me to play for the clients. This way, at least, I won't get rusty. Those paintings. I think Herr Gustav wanted me to help him choose the one he should buy. He must have left me a note somewhere. Hmm, I should take a closer look at those paintings before choosing one. So glad Herr Gustav likes me to play for the clients. This way, at least, I won't get rusty. There's no one to serve upstairs. And besides, there's still much to do down here. I don't want to let Herr Gustav down. There, like that. Try not to move now, darling. Another creation of Herr Gustav. I guess he won't mind if I take a quick look. Madonna laces. The Silberspiegel, the heart-shaped rock face that gave its name to the refuge. According to Herr Gustav, only the most seasoned alpinists can climb it.
the highest peak in the region. Little Lenny said that it's the keeper of the border with Switzerland, and that it's supposed to feed on the souls. The Devil Pass starts here, the end of the road for an inexperienced hiker. Looks like the customers don't need me anymore. I'd better check the stove. No, we can do better. I'd better not disturb them. I don't want to risk another scolding. I think Herr Gustav would not like it if I left the refuge during the service, so I had better stick around. Looks like the customers don't need me anymore. I'd better check the stove. Come on, Leon, show me your energy, your youth. Oh dear, you look more like my old Aunt Helga. Looks like there's something wrong with the airflow. I need to add more wood in the fire. Hmm, looks all good to me. Better try another one. Looks like the customers don't need me anymore. I'd better check the stove. Off you go, my girl. You'll be fine.
It's not enough. I need to feed the fire more. That should be it for the fire, but I think there's something wrong with the airflow. Hmm, looks all good to me. Better try another one. No. Hmm. Looks all good to me. That one is loose. Impossible. Hmm. Looks all good to me. Looks all good to me. Better try another one. Hmm. Looks all good to me. This mechanism controls the air intake, if I remember correctly. That's it. I'm done here. I've done all that Herr Gustav told me to do. I'd better go and tell him. All right. Fine. No more orders and everyone served. That's the girl. Now listen, Dana. I know, you know, the brown shadow is dangerous, right? So for heaven's sake, keep your feelings to yourself. And refrain from answering her burger back like you did, eh? The brown shadow is not something you can just chit-chat about. But... Look, it's not safe, and it will only come back and bite you. Mark my words, Dana, especially in today's climate. I only... Dana, I know. Just be careful. No one wants problems with fascists. You get my drift? And maybe next time I'll give you advice, like I did earlier. Just take it. Just listen to old Gustav. Got it? If in doubt... Before you go jumping in with your two feet, come and see old Gustav. Got it? So, young lady, you're still after the academy in the fall, are you not? What you waiting for, then? Get back to your practicing and play us a nice tune while you're at it. All right, then. I will. Thank you, Herr Gustav. Play something melodious this time. It'll make a nice change from the military pieces some of the patrons have been requesting of late.
Well, Herr Gustav did a pretty good job repairing that key I broke yesterday.
I'm so sorry. I, I, I got carried away. Bravo! 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 Bravo. Bravo. Clap! How can you clap? Oh, so you like the noise, do you? Do you? Well, you should be ashamed! Ashamed, I say! To applaud the music of a... of a... of a treacherous Polish separatist! Rebel rousing! It's this kind of rebel rousing that puts the poison of Marxist Vagarian ideology in the minds of honest people! And those who partake in its vulgarization are accessory to treason! You are drunk, Herr Hoss. <laughs> Out of my way, boy! <laughs> Come, Fräulein. Best clear off until the dust settles. You should have seen me then, Fräulein Walker. I was so young and eager to witness whatever could happen between Dana and Leon. I needed... Shouldn't you be in bed? Not now, Lenny. <laughs> Looks like Dana didn't have time to choose a painting for Father to buy. I guess it's not surprising, given that fuss Herr Hoss made. He had it coming. Oh, Lenny, why don't you leave the piano to those who actually know how to play it, huh? <sighs> What's the point? I can never compete with Dana. Lenny, don't. Give them some space, would you? You all right? Yeah, I thought so. 
It's just that if I had retaliated, I would have lost my job, you know? Believe me, I came this close to not being able to pay for my studies at the academy after the holidays. Forget it. He was blind drunk. Won't even remember it come tomorrow. All Gustav could see it was in your fault. Besides, you didn't see him after your performance. Ecstatic he was. There are more and more people like that brute. They don't even bother to hide their hatred anymore. It's like they've been given a mission, or perhaps I should say permission, to abuse people like me, as if Vagarins had suddenly become the scourge of society. And we're powerless to act because if we did, we'd lose our home. My parents, they've become a bundle of nerves. They can't sleep at night. Only last week, our shop window got smashed again. And our neighbors, they couldn't care less. And neither could the authorities. I'm sorry. I've upset you, haven't I? You've put my own suspicions into words, Fraulein. Because what you say about the Brown Shadow is true, and that's what worries me. I used to think they were just a bunch of cranks in their ridiculous uniforms. But now I can see these lunatics really are serious. Deadly serious. But you did know who was behind the Origin Expedition. Never gave it much thought, to be honest. Only met Huss and the scientists today. For me, they were no different from any other group I've trained. If I'd have known that, I'd have had second thoughts. Actually, do you know what? What? I'm going to stop training them. Can you do that? It's still a free country, right? So after a few weeks' notice, I'll be off the hook. At least, I get to spend the summer here with you. Painting. But I don't paint. No, you play. I paint. It's my passion. And you can be my muse. Is that what you say to all the girls? No. Never. Hello, you two lovebirds. Everyone's going to bed, so you better come back inside or you'll catch cold, or worse. And that's how Dana pipped everyone at the post. It only took one look for Leon to fall head over heels in love with her. And it didn't take much for Dana to fall for him. Love at first sight, you might say. The whole band stayed at the chalet all summer long. Then, I suppose, everyone went their own sweet way. Did you ever see any of them again? Oh, no. What about Dana and Leon? They two went their own ways, I guess. And that, Fraulein Walker, is all there is to it. Where did Dana go after she left? Back to her parents, I should think. Somewhere in Vargen. Do you know if she's still alive? Can't be sure, but I doubt it. It was a lifetime ago, Fraulein Walker. Where do you think she might be if she were? No idea. Things went from bad to worse after that summer. Not to mention half the town was razed during the war. Did Dana leave anything here? Any documents or anything that might help me find where she went? 
not that I know of. But I suppose there might be... In father's old coffer. Must still be in the loft. Yunta bought it from him that summer, so she could use it to store her precious filming gear. She was supposed to come back for it, but she never did. If there is anything that can help you, it will be in there. So feel free to look around the refuge by yourself if you like, even though I don't think anyone managed to open the coffer since Yunta left. Thank you, Demoiselle Lenny. Thank you so much. Maintaining the refuge must be a huge job. As tough as Lenny is, I hope she has some help when she needs it. That must be the piano Dana played on the night she met Leon. The night Lenny told me about. Ah, I see I'm not the only one stuck here. <laughs> Ah, pull up a seat, and together we can moan about being stuck here. Thank you, but I have things to do. I hope you can stay until this evening, at least. In London, they have the changing of the guard. Here we get the changing of the colors. I guarantee it's worth the wait. Hmm? English? American, actually. Oh, seeing as you've come so far, then... Besides... It's always nicer to be stranded in good company. From Belgium, myself, on a world climbing tour. Stranded? Didn't you know? They've closed the Teufelskragen. That's the path they call the Devil's Pass. So that's what all the fuss is about. All down to climate change. You mean the thaw, right? Made the path too dangerous to climb and... apparently resulted in a morbid discovery. Oh? Bodies of resistance fighters, killed while leading refugees to Switzerland. Frozen solid. Resistance fighters? You mean... frozen since the Second World War? Ah, uh, that's what the paper says. Is that what the tent's for? It's a temporary chapel of rest that the rescue team made while waiting for the bodies to be airlifted out. I see. I guess there's no reason to disrespect the departed, even after all these years. I only hope all this sudden interest from excavationists puts an end to the stupid rumors that a strange creature haunts the Zilberspiegel. Otherwise, you can be sure, as soon as the old lady pops her clogs, this place will become run over by those infernal tourists. Can you tell me about this Devil's Pass? Oh, it's on the far side of the Cirque, looking out from the terrace. As you can imagine, it's called Devil's Pass because it's extremely dangerous. Most of all because of the risk of avalanche. Only seasoned alpinists can negotiate it, really. As a professional alpinist myself, what I love about it is knowing I'm climbing in the tracks of courageous climbers of bygone times. There's a real sense of uh, history about it. For example, resistance fighters used it during the war to smuggle vagherons and uh, other victims of the Brown Shadow into Switzerland.
Right. Thanks for cluing me in. Anyway, I better get back to what I was doing. You are welcome, Fräulein. Can I help you, Fräulein? What about those frozen bodies they discovered at the foot of Devil's Pass? Well, um, due to climate change, the snow line has receded, revealing the bodies trapped in the ice since the Second World War. Most probably resistance fighters and exiles, trying to flee the fascist occupiers and reach Switzerland by the pass. Hmm? I imagine they got caught in an avalanche. Poor wretches have been imprisoned ever since. Until today. That is why the authorities have blocked access to the pass, so they can take the bodies out, identify them, and give them a proper burial. I've had some experience with fantastic fauna myself. But what do you make of the so-called strange creature that roams the mountain? <laughs> Just another local fairy tale to pull in the tourists, if you ask me. They say it lives in prehistoric caves. <laughs> and that it's responsible for people going missing. Ooh. Some even say that the mysterious cries you can hear on some nights are the creature calling for a mate. In other words, the usual twaddle you normally get in remote or uncharted places like uh, the high mountain or the deep sea. <laughs> twaddle passed down from generation to generation through sheer ignorance. Surely, from what I read on the way here, the cries could come from an animal native to the area, couldn't they? That is my thinking exactly. No doubt a bear with something caught in his throat. <laughs> it happens, you know. <laughs> Probably scared the tourist one evening, or... Uh, mm, maybe it was young pranksters. Right. Thanks for cluing me in. Anyway, I better get back to what I was doing. You are welcome, Fräulein. A mechanical stove. Seen better days. Hm. Another object with the look of the Varlberg workshop. Lenny's father must have made this stair lift to help her get up and down the stairs. Must have taken him many hours. It's touching when you think about it.
Dormitories? I wonder how many people stop at the refuge these days. Up real, like the ones used on old cinema projectors. Take up real, like the ones used on old cinema projectors. I must remember to ask Lenny about it. This must be Yunta's coffer, the one Lenny spoke about. I should check each side of the coffer.
I should have a look at these locks I opened on the top of the coffer. Amazing! Now it shows the view from the terrace. Don't want to break my neck, thank you very much. This must be Lenny's room. Not sure I'm allowed in here, really. Photos of the refuge. Looks like they're arranged by time period. This series ends at 2002, three years ago, when I began my journey with Oscar and Hans's train. There are no photos of the occupation of Wagen by the Brown. These date from before the war. There's even one from the summer when Dana worked at the refuge.
All these photos go up to the 80s, including my date of birth. Dear, looks like a storage room. Mmm, it's cold in here. Somebody's been smoking. A client, maybe? Unless Lenny likes to sneak a smoke. The painting on the top of Yunta's coffer reminds me of the view from the terrace. The painting on the top of Yunta's coffer reminds me of the view from the terrace. Blocking the view. There must be a way of removing it. Impossible. Better try something else. So that's what they call the Devil's Pass. The bodies of the resistance fighters that they...
that's the fable. What now, Fräulein? I was just about to doze off. How did you meet Leon Kobatis? Why do you ask? You from the police or something? No. I just thought I'd ask, since you seem to appreciate him. Didn't you? Fräulein, when I said you could look in the guest rooms, it didn't include my room. But yes, like I said before, he was a regular customer even before the episode with Dana. To me, he was like a movie star. What young girl wouldn't be bowled over by a young, handsome alpinist? And to top it off, an Olympic medalist? About Junta's coffer. What about it? Where did the coffer in the loft come from? In fact, Father made it himself during the long winter evenings. He wanted something more elegant and solid than the old family coffer where he kept the takings. So he made the one upstairs, thanks to the techniques he learnt when he worked in the Vorlberg factory in Valadilene. Valadilene in France? That's right. The price Junta paid was equivalent to a month's worth of takings. Money well spent, though, because it was built like a mountain fortress. Anything else? I'll be going then.
I should try to use some coordinates from the spyglass with the locks on Yunta's coffer. Looks like she didn't note down the end of her... No doubt Yunta must have written this. Summer, 1937. The year Dana worked here. Let's see. I filled my last diary last night. Ordered another one, but still waiting for supplies to be delivered to the refuge. Using an old envelope in the meantime. Today invited Dana for a chat after her shift. I'd like to know what Leon sees in her. I've never seen him so smitten. Thanks for popping up, Dana. How did the shift go? Fine, same as usual. Just finishing up here, then I'll make us a nice cup of tea. Wow, that looks futuristic. What is it? Ah, that little baby is my viewer. That's why it goes in the coffer. What does it do? I use it to put together and edit the rushes. The what? <laughs> rushes. In other words, the strips of unedited footage. I've finished today's selection, so be a dear and put it in the coffer, would you? I would if I knew how. Oh, just turn the key in the lock. Dana, be a darling and put the key somewhere safe. You can't be too careful with these mountain people, especially with that little Lenny sniffing around my equipment all the time. I think you ought to know. On the night we first met, when that horrible hearse made such a fuss, I caught Lenny playing with one of your camera lenses. I knew it! I just knew she was rummaging in my things. I'll make that little brat sorry we ever met. Believe me. Where do you normally put it? I have a little hiding place over there. Is this where you want me to put the key? Yes, there's a dear. It's a handy hiding place. Who made it? Oh, Herr Gustav. He knows only too well that some custom... Just need to finish preparing for the filming tomorrow. Then we can chap away to our heart's content. If you could just fetch me a new roll of film from the darkroom, then we're done.
I'm sure there's more for me to do here. Impossible. Wrong one. need a key to open it. Where can I find the combination for the mechanism? End of Yunta's notes. Impossible to know what happened next. But maybe I can figure out how to open the coffer from what I've read. I love your photos! Ah, well they each represent an element of mountain wildlife and flora I've photographed recently. I use them as a sort of checklist. A checklist, huh?
That doesn't work. Wrong one. Must have got it wrong. The screen is in the way. The screen is in the way.
Interesting footage. Let's see what's on the other reel. I should rewind and remove the first reel before putting this one on. Lenny didn't say she filmed a fight between Dana and Leon. I'd better go back and see her to find out about it.
Demoiselle Lenny, I saw the film you shot of Dana and Leon. So Junta kept it. She got so cross when she discovered I'd rummaged through her stuff. She most certainly had secrets of her own, that one. I know it was ages ago, but can you recall what happened between Dana and Leon that day? You do like flogging a dead horse, don't you, Fraulein? But as you please. Since Junta never let me use her camera, I decided not to ask her anymore. Like that, she couldn't say no, could she? And that's when I heard them arguing. How could you agree to this, Leon? How could you? I told you, I had no choice. The local guide for Baltayar can't do it anymore. He got injured. Why don't you just refuse then? It's their stupid expedition, not yours. Look, Dana, I didn't want to tell you, but... But what? Frank Huss, that brute from the other night. He's the one that made the call here. In other words, he's taking revenge by sending me to the other side of the world with the Origin Expedition. And he said that if I refused, something might happen. Not just to me, but to you as well. What do you mean? You know what I mean. You're a Vagarian and so are your parents, right? Well, Huss says it won't be long before the Brown Shadow is in power and he made it clear that something was brewing and that you and your parents would be first on the list. What list? I don't know, but it can't be good. Then he said that other Vagarians would follow. Dear God. Dana, darling, the world's gone crazy. Promise, promise me you'll be very careful. It will be all right if you just watch yourself and what you say. I've asked Junta to stand by you just in case. It won't be long, darling. Half a school year at the Music Academy. I'll be home for Christmas. Promise. Oh, uh, come here now, my pretty Edelweiss. Don't call me that. You know I don't like it. It's true, though. That's exactly where you are, my pretty Edelweiss. If you keep that up, Leon Kobatis, I'll find you a nickname, too. <laughs> Go on, then. All right. Your nickname will be Alpine Lover from now on. All right, but maybe you uh, ought not to say this in public. Beautiful, isn't it? I could stay here forever. There, Fraulein Walker. That is all I have to say. I hope this time you have what you need to continue on your journey. Thank you, Demoiselle Lenny. But there is just one more thing. You mentioned a music academy? They must have ledgers and archives. Maybe I'll be able to find out whether Dana left an address there. Well, it hasn't moved. It's still in Vargen. Go to the Musicians' District. It's right next to the Musical Square. That's all I can tell you, so if you don't mind, Fraulein. Thank you. Then that's where I'll continue my search. Is it really worth your while to keep looking for Dana? Is it not just another pipe dream, Fraulein? I get the impression there have been others. I prefer to look at it as a calling. Besides, I don't have much choice. Thanks to you, she's a part of me now. As you wish. I hope you find what you are looking for. Thank you. Again.
I've got everything I need from here, I guess. Best get back to the guest house. Get some rest. I'll go to the Music Academy first thing in the morning. <laughs> 